Some years ago, I made a tutorial on how to draw scales, which was very simple. I wanted to revamp that and add some depth and detail to the idea. So I'll be going over several types of scales, their real life examples, and how to draw them. One thing to remember in any drawing involving shading is to always be aware of where your light source is and how light will fall on your subject. Fine scales are tiny and nearly without texture. Often found on flanks or belly, they are To draw these scales, you can draw them in circular shapes close together. They aren't always aligned in rows and they just expand out in either an increasing or decreasing size. You can also add small lines to kind of help you in the direction these scales are growing, like on arms, bellies, um, tails, different areas of the body. So the lines will kind of give you an effect of how they're growing or how they're expanding out of an area. Ventral scales are most obviously found on snakes. They are oblong, low friction, abdominal scales that aid the snakes in movement. These scales align with the upper rows of scales on the flanks. And these scales can be drawn fairly simple, whether intending them as they are found in snakes or lizards, using vertical lines with a slight curve. And make sure to align these scales with one to two rows of lateral scales. For shading, the texture of the ventral scales can be varied in many species, but you have general overlapping of scales that gives a slight indent to each scoot. You can give a slight line of shading beneath each of the scales as you move down, and there's also a notable shiny look to these scales on many snakes. Cycloid scales have a bumpy texture, usually found on dorsal areas of a reptile. Many lizards and geckos possess these scales. Bearded dragons and leopard geckos are great examples. To draw these scales, you can either have a circular, triangular, or may even have pointed surfaces. Your choice will depend on the species you are drawing or overall preference. The texture and outlines will depend on the angles these are scales are drawn. For shading, any type of granular scale you draw, keep in mind the simple shapes represented. Is it spherical, pyramidal, or conical? This will give you a better idea of how light and shadow will appear. Also, don't be afraid to use close-up references of the skin of these animals as you, as you will see wrinkles, bumps, and even patterns. Keeled scales have raised center ridges found often on water snakes, garter snakes, and vipers. These scales reduce reflective surface and the theory is that it aids the snakes in both hiding from predators or from potential prey. If you've ever held a hognose snake or a water snake, you can attest to the rough texture of this skin. You can draw these scales um, similar to a teardrop shape with a single ridge running down the middle. These scales do overlap, however, when the skin is stretched, each of the scales are laid out in rows with the skin visible between them. For shading, imagine the underside of a leaf with its stem running down the center. One side of the scale usually fall on the darker end of the shading with emphasis on the center ridge outline. The outer rim of the lit side of the skilled scale has an indent that will also catch some shadow. Spines are technically vertebral scales with some being more extreme than others. Many iguanas have these down their backs along with bearded dragons having smaller rows of spines around their heads and bodies. While they might look like bone, they are made up of ker keratin just like other scales. You can draw these like small teeth and these spines are simply stretched out triangles when drawing on a 2D surface. Some are completely straight while others have a curve or bent to them. These will vary according to the body areas in which they are found and the species to which they belong. 
for shading. Uh, flat, erect spines like that of iguanas can be drawn in a 2D manner with attention paid to texture and shine, as that is variable. Conical and triangular spines like those of bearded dragons and other lizards can be addressed as the shapes they closely resemble, i.e. a sphere, a cone, or a pyramid. Again, don't be afraid to use photo references. In conclusion, I hope this tutorial helps to get into the nitty gritty of reptilian scales, whether you use them in the context of real animals or more fantastical ones. See you again soon.